Let's take a look at how Windows draws graphics on the screen. So you can see here the architecture of the main model that is in work over here. Over here at the top, you got the application that is wanting to display graphics on the screen. It has a couple of options of APIs, for example, Windows GDI or maybe Direct 3D. And we did take a look at Windows GDI on one of my previous videos. It's a pretty simple API that lets you draw simple graphics on the screen. For example, drawing a rectangle is very simple. You just call the rectangle function, pass in the device context as a first parameter. Device context is basically where you want to draw it. It can be, for example, the whole screen or maybe a specific window. Afterwards, just pass in the coordinates and you have a rectangle on the screen. Now, if you follow along what is going on when you call this GDI function, it's going to go to the win32k.sys driver. And from there, it's just going to direct into the DirectX kernel driver. This is actually called dxgkernel.sys. And you can see over here in this diagram pretty clearly that DirectX is the only one that is actually talking with the graphics driver. In a lot of cases, the graphics driver is going to come from a third party. But if you have a fresh installation of Windows with no third party graphic drivers installed, you're going to have the Microsoft fallback, which is called basic display. We're going to take a look at that in a second. You can see even using a different API, for example, Direct3D, which is more advanced than GDI, lets you do more rich graphics. It also eventually ends up at the DirectX kernel driver. As you can see over here, I brought up VirtualBox and I have a virtual machine called Windows 10. It's a basic Windows 10 setup, and we're gonna just set up kernel debugging on this and take a look at how this works under the hood. Before I'm gonna boot this up, I'm gonna just configure one thing for kernel debugging. So I'm gonna go here to settings, click here on serial ports and enable the port one. Port mode, I'm gonna change to host pipe. I'm gonna use a pipe to connect through the kernel debugger. Uncheck the connect to existing pipe. Let's give it an address so I can use this address to connect to the pipe from the debugger. Let's call it Windows 10 debug. Now I'm just going to copy this so I can paste it into the debugger and I'm going to boot up the machine. Okay, before I'm going to go ahead and configure kernel debugging, I'm going to show you something real quick. So I'm going to start run over here and I'm going to run a program that is called DX Diag. This is built in Windows, so it's going to be available on your computer as well. As you can see, it's the DirectX diagnostic tool, and I can just click here on display, and I'll get actual information about the main driver that is used for the graphics. In this case, basicdisplay.sys. And this is very interesting, because you can see over here that the device that is being used, in this case, is the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. And this is the scenario in which I didn't install any custom third-party driver on my system. This is just a fresh installation of Windows. And this is good for my video because I want to keep things as simple as possible. So when I'm going to connect with the kernel debugger, I'm going to put a breakpoint on some function that is coming from basicdisplay.sys. Now I'm going to go ahead and click run again. This time I'm going to run msconfig. Now click here on boot, advanced options, and click over here on debug. Make sure you have COM1 selected as a debug port and the baud rate to be this. Now I'm going to click on OK. Now I'm going to restart the system. Now while it's going to do the restart, I'm going to just open up WinDBG. I'll put information in the description on how you can install this on your machine. Click over here on File, and then attach the kernel. Make sure you're on the COM tab over here and you have the baud rate configured correctly. Over here on Port, I'm going to paste the port that we just copied over there, Windows 10 Debug. Now I'm going to click on OK. Now it's just waiting to connect to the system. OK, you can see now that it's successfully connected to Windows 10, so kernel debugger connection has been established. And now it hit the initial breakpoint. I'm just going to tell it to continue execution because I want to get to the more later boot of the system. This is currently very early in the boot stages. So I'm going to run the G command. That's going to tell the debugger to continue. Now I can see Windows is starting to boot up. Okay, so we got the system booted up. Now is a good time to put a breakpoint and start playing around. And I'm going to break the debugger by running control break. Now you can see it hit a breakpoint and I now have a command line here that I can start running commands. First command I'm going to run is lm, that's going to be list modules. And this will show me the current modules that are loaded into the kernel. As you can see, one of the modules is called basic display. This is exactly the driver that we saw before and this is the driver that we're going to play around with in this video. By the way, we can just click on this and get some details about it. We can see that this is indeed basic display.sys. .sys, by the way, is the extension of drivers on Windows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first examine the symbols that are exported by this driver. For this, I can use the X command. X stands for examine. That's how you can remember this. Afterwards, I'm going to pass in basic display. Then I'm going to use an exclamation point and a star. This is a wildcard that will tell it to list all the symbols that are exported by basic display. 
Now we can see we get a very long list of symbols, so we can't make much of this. We want to go ahead and filter this. The way I can do that is by adding more text here. Let's say I want to go ahead and filter everything that has BLT in the name. What exactly is BLT? So BLT is a common word that is used when talking about graphics. It stands for block transfer. This basically means transfer bit information from one place to another. So we're gonna list all the symbols that have this in their name. We can see we have here a couple of symbols. Specifically, I'm interested in this function. This is called fill FB BLT info. FB probably stands for frame buffer, and this is something that is very interesting for us because we can play around with the frame buffer. So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint on this. So I'm gonna just copy this name and use the BP command. That stands for breakpoint. And now I'm going to run the G command. That's going to continue the execution of the operating system. Now I can see it's telling us the debuggy is running. I can go back here to Windows. Even just putting my cursor inside of the virtual machine, it'll trigger the breakpoint. And you can see now that the breakpoint has been hit. I'll start by using the U command. That's going to be unassemble. That's, that's going to show me some of the assembly that is currently in the line that I'm at. You can see some of the assembly contained in this function. If I just press enter, it's going to show me more of the function in the assembly. As you can see over here on this function, it starts with a bunch of initialization on these lines, just setting some registers. Over here on this line is where the interesting stuff starts happening. You can see it's copying a certain pointer over here that's calculating with some registers into REX. And then it's copying REX to some other place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint on this line and we're going to take a look at REX. Let's see what is there. So I'm going to copy this address over here, the address of this line that I'm interested in at. I'm going to use the BP command again, but this time I'm going to pass in a flag that is slash one. That means that I'm using a temporary breakpoint that will only trigger once. Paste the address in memory that I just copied, and I'm going to execute this. Now we have a breakpoint on this line, so I can just continue execution by using the G command. G is go, by the way. Now you can see our breakpoint was hit, and we can take a look at what is inside of the REX register. To just see the value of REX, I can use the R command, that's going to be R for register, and then REX. We can see a certain value here that looks like an address in memory. Let's go ahead and take a look at what is inside of this memory address. So for this, I'm going to use the display bytes command, that's going to be DB, and pass in REX. As we can see here, the contents of the memory indeed look very interesting and kind of like they're following a certain pattern. Let's look at some more of this memory. For this, I can pass in the L flag. This will tell it the length of the output that I want, for example, 100. You can see now I'm getting more lines. It looks like this is following a certain pattern. Now what we're actually seeing over here is the frame buffer. This is really cool, so I can just write into this memory certain color values and it'll display them on the screen. It'll overrun what is currently on the screen. So for this I'm going to use the F command, that's going to be fill. By the way, this is a good chance to show the help system that comes built in WinDBG. Just go ahead and run .hh, that's going to open the help system and the command you want information about, for example F, for fill memory. Now I'm going to click here on fill memory over here and we're going to have information about how to use this command and what it does. Just pass in a range and a pattern to fill the memory with and it's going to fill the entire memory range. So I'm going to start by using F, then I'm going to pass in the range. So the memory is going to start from REX and let's say I want to fill up, I don't know, like 10,000 bytes. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with FF values. This is FF in hex. And what this will do is basically fill in the red, green, and blue values with FF, which is going to make the screen white. Now, it's not going to make the entire screen white because the screen is larger than 10,000 bytes in the frame buffer, but you're going to see part of the screen as white. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to run this command. Now let's go ahead and paint another part of the screen in the gray color. So I'm going to run the same command, but this time I'm going to skip 10,000 bytes from REX, and I'm going to fill it up, for example, with 40 instead of FF. So this will basically draw another block of gray pixels after the white pixels. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear the breakpoint with the BC, that's going to be breakpoint clear, and then star, clear all the breakpoints, and finally continue execution with G. Now let's go back to Windows, and you can see over here the white and gray rectangles. Now let's go ahead and fill up a larger section of the frame buffer, so we'll see this effect more amplified. So I'm going to put a breakpoint at the same place we were before, this address Temporary breakpoint right over here. Now I'm going to continue execution with the G command. Go back to the virtual machine, move the cursor a little, and the breakpoint was hit. Now I'm going to repeat the fill command that we just did, but instead of just 10,000, let's make it 100,000. Let's give it some kind of gray value, for example, 80 on all the pixel, 80 in hex. This will basically cover a lot of the screen with gray. So I'm going to run this. It's going to tell me that it filled the bytes, and now I can just run G for continue. 
Take a look. Now a lot of the screen is filled with gray. And if I go ahead and just drag my cursor over here, take a look at what's happening. Pretty cool. Now one final note going back to the diagram that we saw at the start of the video. Going back to the function that we just used, if we take a look at the call stack of the function over here, the fill FB BLT info that is coming from the basic display, I can do this by running the k command. You can see the call stack here is going quite crazy. A lot of Win32K related stuff, eventually arriving at basic display, but it's passing through DXG kernel, which is DirectX kernel subsystem, the DirectX driver. But you can see that it's pretty much following what is going on here in the diagram. So it's very interesting to see this and compare between the architecture on the right side and what's going on here in the kernel stack. By the way, you can see that this is related to the mouse coming into the virtual machine because a lot of mouse related functions are called on the way to finally getting to the basic display driver.